another Art of Composing daily vlog. I'm John Branningham, and today we are going to be, uh, it's kind of like a continuation on what I talked about with sketching in an earlier vlog. So somebody had asked for me to show some of the techniques that I was talking about, and I figured, yeah, let's just do this in a, another short video. So you can see here, one of the, one of the things that I, I like to do is start with constraints. So it doesn't, you don't have to give too much thought to this. It's really, it's about just having the constraints. It's not necessarily the constraints that you choose. So I'm going to just go ahead and start with, uh, you know, I'm just give myself, a, give it a piano uh, staff right there. And then I'm going to just pick a key signature. Why don't we do um, D major? So F sharp, C sharp, okay. F sharp. Okay. And then we need to pick a time signature. So why don't we do three, four is a good one. So right there, we've already set some clear constraints. We know the key, we know the time signature. We can pick a tempo. Um, and you know, why don't we do something kind of slow? So I don't know this, I'm, I'm guessing it's somewhere around 80-ish. So I'm just gonna write 80-ish right there. And now when I'm starting to come up with ideas here, I, I like to write as quickly as possible and get as much down on the paper as possible. Uh, but often it does start with just a little bit of playing around. And, right? So right there, I've played an idea. Instead of trying to make a judgment on it and say yes or no, I'm just gonna go ahead and write it. It's the first thing that popped into my mind, so it seems to be the thing that wants to come out. So let's go ahead and write D, A, F sharp like that, right? And now here's, I'll start to show you some of the techniques I have. We do this, and we've got the rhythms there. You know, it sounds like I wanna do that a couple times, so I'm gonna go like this, just give myself some empty bars. Feels like I'm doing it four times. Now, you can put a little repeat symbol here, right? That's a quick way to just get the stuff down. It lets me know that this is really, it's almost like a thematic introduction. Just a harmonic material. So there we go, I, I wrote an F sharp. So nothing too complex here, but the chord does change there. So I've got D, I got B flat, and I got G. Now I know the rhythms there, so I can save time by not drawing the lines. These are little techniques that you can use to get through a lot of material quickly. Okay, so now I know. Here, um, can't remember what I did, is it? So now here, this is another technique I can use. I know basically what I'm going for here accompaniment wise, and what I can do is just write D right there. It's telling me it's a D chord again. Right? So you've got a lot of flexibility. You don't have to stick to one thing. I could have easily written one like that just to let me know the left hand. I'm sticking to the same shape, uh, but I can write it harmonically like that. I can write the individual notes. Sometimes I'll just stack the notes like this uh, just so I can quickly see the chord. Um, these are all cool little techniques to help you get through real quickly. So now I'm jumping down to another line. Don't really worry about how everything looks. Now I did read in a, in a book about Ravel once that Ravel had a lot of issues with correcting wrong notes because he neglected to copy over the key signature. So I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to copy out my key signature so I don't have to constantly put accidentals. Um, so now let's say 
I want to repeat this. I can call this idea A and then I number each bar. So what that means is now I can reference that. I don't even have to rewrite that out. I can, if I wanted to do an exact repetition, I could just, I could literally do this. A, you know, one through four. Boom. And now I've copied it out. Now most of the time, I won't do that. I mean, I I'll, also I could put like a repeat sign, whatever it speaks to you personally. However, I won't usually do that. I'll, I'll usually make a change. So I'll say maybe A1 is repeated, A2, but then maybe A3, I'm gonna make a change. So I'll go. different about it. So right there I wrote the chords out or I wrote the chord out and let's see. you know maybe I'll do something like that. I don't know where this is going and I may take material out um, and then this is back to this chord right here. So it's like that. You can see I'm leaving a lot of information out and um, I'm trying to abstract just what is the critical information that I need. Now, this is not a good thing to give to an orchest orchestrator per se. Um, this is for your internal use. If I was going to give something to somebody to say, turn this into something more, um, then you're going to want to give more detail. Than that. You know, if you, if you look at the sketches of professional film composers, they're often very detailed. Uh, because you're not necessarily you're not relying on the orchestrator to to fill in your gaps of musical knowledge, uh, or at least you shouldn't be. The orchestrator is there to take something that you've written and, and blow it up to a full score. Um, so one of the other techniques that I talked about, which I find very useful, is let's say, what if I want a, a change of pace here, and I'll just go. Well, I'm going to start to write that out, but instead of having to write out every single chord, oh, this is in 3 4, so I need to not have four beats. All right, so there we go. Now I've made it a change. But instead of having to write every single note out every time and all the articulations, I just know that this is the same thing being repeated. And you can do that with a lot of things. I mean, if you write that figure out once, um, and then let's say you want to repeat that. That's kind of like a 4-4 kind of figure. So I'll just do it one more time here. But then repetitions, I can just, just indicate that it's the same thing. I don't have any lines on one, two, three, four, five, there we go. So these are just some of the, the cool little techniques that I like to use when I'm sketching um, there's a million and one techniques and really you should start to think of what works for you and, and what you can start to come up with on your own um, for instance let's say that you don't necessarily know the, the notes you want to write but but you want to write a scale well just do a line like that as long as it it makes sense to you <laughs> detailed on some parts and and maybe I like this as an outline for a melody but I want a little bit more you know right add more ornaments 
or you know maybe even put in some whatever rhythm and just figure it out later <laughs> with rhythms and things like that. But that's the benefit of being flexible and not putting too much down at the beginning. It's because your mind can play around with the concepts that are on the page. It's not... You know, that may be what I started with, but... Flexibility and not being too precise with your sketching, I believe, is actually useful. So hopefully you enjoyed this vlog. If you're interested in learning composition, learning uh, similar techniques to this, and obviously the fundamentals, then check out www.partofcomputing.com, and I will talk to you.